Aye aye. Bit of sunshine, that's alright, isn't it? Autumn sunshine. Well, is it autumn or winter? I never know. It's winter, isn't it? But if you watch Winter Watch, they'll say it's autumn. Uh, anyway, I um, so we're doing two things today. I was just, we're going to have a quick look at the maze clamp because I've opened that. I didn't film me opening it, but I've uh, I've opened it. We just started feeding it first day today, um, which should be good. And secondly, we are putting slug pellets on on the new grass lay we put down. Now you might remember that was put down uh, September. I spoke to the agronomist and he recommended some slug pellets on it. Now the thing was, we were going to put them on with a tractor or, or a vehicle anyway, and now we've had quite a lot of rain lately, the ground's really soft, and the reality is I think we'll do more damage than good by putting the slug pellets on with a vehicle. So I was sort of a dilemma, what do I do? Do I wait and put them on later, in which time the slugs might have munched everything, or do I put them on by hand? I wouldn't get the coverage I would, which you accuracy with the uh, slug pellet distributor, whatever you call that thingy. But I'm getting them on there rather than waiting. So I'm putting them on by hand today, people. So I'm walking over a seven acre field putting slug pellets on, which should be interesting. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Let's go and have a look at the um, maze and then we'll look at slug pellets. So here we have it, first day open. Looking good, absolutely no waste on it. Really pleased about that. You can see there. So we put this in. Do you remember? Let's have a look at us cutting it in beginning of October. Quite noisy. So that was uh, that was the uh, beginning of October. It's been in here a month. It started to ferment, which is good. You can still see um, the little bits of corn in it. Uh, there you go. Look, there's a the classic little kernel there. Whatever, cracked open. It's very important so the cows can actually digest it. Um, otherwise, if they're whole, they'll plop them out, as it were. So we're putting a bit of protein in with it. There we go. That's going in with it. Some there's some sugar beet pellets there, the big lumps. Oh man, there's some bits of um, I think that's soya husk and stuff. So a protein mix mixing with this. We're putting it into ring feeders here, so they can eat round those, and they're having that silage. Now, I know I know a lot of farms do um, have a feeder wagon and mix it uh, and sometimes I'm a little bit embarrassed about how we do things because we're not very techy but do you know what it's a very simple system we do it with a bucket and we tip it in there so maybe the cows don't get 100% balanced but uh, we had a good discussion with our accountant last Friday and he was quite impressed of what we're earnings per cow on this farm are um, compared with some of the larger farms he's got that uh, have all the right kit, but actually, do you know what? It costs a lot of money to run this these places just to stand still. Um, so I, I never boast that we've got the best it to set up. We haven't, but at least we're still here and we're still uh, able to make a living for two families on a very basic system. So that's what we do: self feed silage, and then a couple of ring, or not couple, about four or five ring feeders with the uh, maize and protein in in with it, and that'll give them. Uh, a reasonable mix diet for the winter not as good as grass in the field but actually do you know pretty good uh, right let's go and have a look at the slug pellets well let's go out to the field and look at the slug pellets
So the ring feeders have gone from there where we were feeding the cattle the other week. We're going off down now by Farmer P's trailer over there into the gateway where we'll be putting the slug pellets. I just loaded them up, we're just heading off there now. You see how wet it's been, there's a big puddle there look. And there's water on the field somewhere down there. I can still see water on the surface, don't we you can make that out. Oops. Right, so we're heading over to the gateway which I would normally go through to but because of the poachers I blocked it off with a uh, Farmer Peace trailer, the yellow trailer, which then makes it difficult for me. This is the problem you get, you see to try and make your farm poacher proof you've got to also make it farmer proof. So it makes it difficult for me to get through gateways which is a right pain. Uh, right, so I'm going to drop this off there, I'm going to put the bag underneath it and I'm going to climb over. There we go, there's Farmer Peace trailer. Let's park up here. Right, let's park up here. Drop that down. And then we'll have a, a quick look. There you go, it's Farmer Peace Trailer. Bought that a couple of years ago. Blocked it in front of the gateway here because they were dry, they, what they were doing is they were going in into this field with their flipping dogs, cutting the string as usual. And running around but the problem I was worried about is the cows getting through this gate onto that new lay which is the last thing I want. Let's have a look and see if there's any water in here. Oh there's some of the rain, Christ is half full of water. I might have to drill a couple of drain holes in there otherwise that would be a problem always wouldn't it. Also I need to tip the trailer up the other way but it's only temporary parked here. Right let's have a look at our slug pellets. Right i got a little mousey hole here because a mouse decides to have a nibble in the workshop where these are... Oh, and they've had to go there as well. Little mousey hole. So I've got to be a bit careful otherwise we'll end up with slug pellets on the... on there. So... Oh, what a pain. Right, let me just sort this out. Let me sort myself out a minute. Here we are then, so here's my bag of sluggy pellets. Slug XX. Gosh, it sounds like a porn film. Slugs. We got 18 restrictive slugs we're watching tonight. No, seriously, so this slug pellets, here we go, let's see what it says. A regular bait formulation containing 29.7 grams kilogram of ferric phosphate used to bait control of slugs and edible and non-edible crops, rainproof. So, oh, and there it is, flipping out, look, pumping out. Now, I'm sure it'll say somewhere about the application rate. High efficiency of slugs. I wear gloves when I put this on. Seven kilograms per hectare, maximum dose, so we mustn't put too much on. Okay. Am I? Hmm. So that's good to read. Contains an action ingredient, ferric phosphate, which naturally occurs in the environment. Ferric phosphate is transformed in the soil by microorganisms into iron and phosphate and becomes part of the soil. Um, and that's quite important because there has been a lot of problems with slug pellets, and I think some of them are, are going to be banned because uh, they can get in the water course and cause a lot of problems. So this one's uh, a fairly safe one, I think. Um, right, so. Look at this, let's have a look at the grass a minute and then we'll see how we go. Of course, the trouble is I don't really know what I'm looking for in slug damage. And maybe I'm too late. Maybe. It's definitely coming up a lot better now though, you see. There's still a few bare patches in the middle there, which I'm not so happy about. I'm not sure what's gone on there, but it's filling out gradually. And I think, you know, we'll come back in here in six months time, I'm sure it'll be pretty good. So I'm going to go around scattering my slug pellets and we'll have a look, but um, 
Mr. Scarecrow's looking very ill. Look at him, poor chap. We might have a look at him later. Mr. Scarecrow, oh my goodness me, you look like you've been out on the lash. Right. Let's have a look at this stuff then. Let's get a bucket of it. Right. I'm going to put some rubber gloves on because I don't really want this stuff on my hands. Ah, oh, that'll come in handy. Right, these are milking gloves. There we go. Right, let's get this open. I'm going to find my trusty pen knife. Where's my trusty pen knife? There's my trusty pen knife. Okay. Right, we'll have a look at this because they're quite interesting to see. They're very tiny. I think um, you're probably used to seeing the ones you see in the garden centres, really big ones. These are really small. Those presumably because you can spread them easily from a machine. Look at these. They are diddy. Look at that. I wasn't expecting them to be so small. They're really small. Really fine. Right, so I'm going to put some of these in the bucket. You can see, look at that. Right, I'll tip some and then we're going to go spreading. Right. Okay, realistically, I've got to do about a third of the field with that. That's going to be difficult, isn't it? So we'll just be spreading it randomly hoping for the best. I know, well no, that's not really fair. I'm not gonna do hoping for the best. I am gonna try and do it well, but uh, it'll be what it'll be. So, um, let's go. Oh, one third done. So you get the idea there. Actually, do you know what? My my camera cut out part of the way near the end because I filled up the memory card. And really, that was just a lot of boring walking, wasn't it? No wonder farmers have got flipping hip replacements, all the walking I'm doing today. So I've covered a third of the field. Uh, and it's interesting. Oh, let me just stand up. It's interesting from my point of view is that you wouldn't normally walk a field like that. But actually, you get a really good insight of what's going on. Uh, we got some good growth in some places, some places very patchy and I don't know whether I'm too late with the slug pellets or whether I got a real problem with the rabbits as well because it looks a bit nibbled. Let's see if I can find a bit. Um, so I'm not, here we go, look there's some of the slug pellets and you can see they're spread out amongst there. So I'm, honestly some of you are probably laughing at me doing it like this but sometimes you've just got to do it. I'm getting it's very wet and muddy here. just tracking it up with any vehicle wouldn't be a good idea I don't think um, 
Let's have a look. I've, I've walked out to this bit. I've seen a lot of kind of little holes where rabbits have been, I think. But, uh, and also, I'm seeing some sort of, look. So we've got a fairly good cover in the grass there in some bits. And then we come over here, it's really bare and really wispy. So there's sort of big areas of nothing. And you can see, that looks like it's been chomped to me. That one there. And there you go, look, there's the evidence of something being burrowing out here. And again there. And there. So, my suspicion is I've got a problem with the rabbits on here. There's a lot of holes here, look, there's some more here, look. Just there. And there. So, I got a feeling, let's have a look. It just looks a bit nibbled off to me. Yeah, definitely. Look at this. Definitely nibbled off there. Can you see that? Of course, this, if you're a rabbit, this is a buffet, isn't it? I have got a friend who's coming out shooting some rabbits. He's had quite a few, but I think I'm battling rabbits on this now. Oh, I actually don't know whether the slugs are such a problem as the rabbits. Uh, <laughs> Nature always wants to battle you, whatever you do. Right, I've got a bit more to do, <laughs> he says. i got a lot more to do. Let me get my bucket back out. I'm gonna spread a bit more out. We'll, we'll have a little stop, I'm gonna... That's my marker, that bag there. So I use a marker to go up to the scarecrow. Oh, I don't really feel like doing this today. Um, let's get another bag out bit out in the bag in the bucket I'm losing my words even and then I think we'll have a recap when we get to the scarecrow Mr. Scarecrow. Here we are. Mr. Scarecrow's here. I think he's lost a bit of weight, don't you? Must be that um, extra fibre diet he's on or something. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I think this is the last year for Mr. Scarecrow. Mr. Scarecrow's head might survive, but Mr. Scarecrow's body, I think that might be kaput. I think he's had it, don't you? Wonder if he'd be any good for bonfire night. Anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to just finish off here. I've got a bit more to put on. I'll uh, just carry on doing this little bit up here. It's not so bad up here. We'll re we'll recap, folks. Me and Mr. Scarecrow. We'll recap. We might go for a pint when lockdown's over if he's still around. Hello. I'd like a pint of real ale, please, but with no slugs. Me and Mr. Scarecrow are going to go for a pint uh, after lockdown, but in the meantime, I'm going to just finish off doing this. We'll have a recap at the end. There isn't much more to say. We're pretty well done. Oh, it's hard work. Should have done it with a quad, but I didn't have access to one at the time. So, um, yeah, some of you professional Arab <laughs> guys are laughing at me. Some of you gardeners are going, yeah, that's all I do. This is a big garden, isn't it, really? Uh, I think my biggest worry out here now is probably the rabbit damage, actually, I think. Seeing a bit of nibbling everywhere, really. Mate, what do you think, Mr. You're not doing your job, really, are you? You're not frying away the rabbits, are you? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Got a look here. Got a look here. All right. Crack on. See you in a bit.
And that, my friends, is the end of the slug pellets. Do you know what? I actually worked out about right. Um, that whole bag, I went round the whole lot. And let's see if I can find it. I found evidence of Mr. Bunny. Look at this. I think all along I've said I think the biggest problem here is Mr. Bunny. Bit of Mr. Bunny is there. I know that's a bit of a tail or whatever that is, but Mr. Bunny has been here. He's left his calling card. There you go. Goodbye, Mr. Bunny tail. Ooh, still stuck there. Anyway, um, so Mr. Bunny's been out here. I think the biggest issue I'm going to have now in the winter is the flipping rabbits. Ah, oh, you can't win, do you? The poachers come and get the flipping hares, which I don't want to lose, but I wish they'd go and just take the rabbits. Although I don't want the poachers in the first place, because they don't look very nice people. Um, right, so we're done here. Okay, better on the field than off, I think. Let me just show you my welly, okay? And this is what I'd be faced with. So, there's my welly. Now, if I bought a flipping tractor out here, sorry, I'm losing you. If I bought a tractor out here, half of this field would end up on the tractor tiles, tires. But also, you can see there some of the some of the little plants have been pulled up where I've been walking over it. Now, if I drove over it with a tractor, because the ground's so soft, the grass would be torn up with the mud and end up on the tractor wheel. So what I'd end up probably with is, or even a quad bike, I think we'd probably do the same, end up with wheel marks all over it. Although the quad bike's a lot lighter, in a few more days it might have dried out enough to do, I don't know. But I'm just wanting to get this stuff on. Oh, I don't know. Right, we'll have a look next spring. <laughs> Possibly going to spray it for chickweed, but they're looking around, doesn't look that bad. Um, if worst case scenario is I have to patch it a bit in the spring with some more grass seed, I think maybe. Huh. First time I've ever done this, really, so I'm learning as I go. And I dare say some of you have done loads of this and know exactly what you're doing, but um, hey ho. All right, I'm taking Mr. Scarecrow down the pub. That's actually my house because we can't go to the pub anymore. Come on, Mr. Scarecrow, we're going. Okay, team, we'll see you soon. Woo! Me and Mr. Scarecrow are off. See ya. My 30 year old rugby shirt is no more. Oh my goodness.